we've seen over the years how all these major AAA studios have been androgenizing women characters, have been speaking out against the games we loved and supported, and got them those billion dollars. While the entire time telling us that how much they hate us, how much they want to get rid of us, and how evil we are for liking women. Real women, not the fake stuff that they're pushing today. But at the GDC, Microsoft came out and said, well, that's just the tip of the iceberg. If you're pissed off now, wait until the next couple of years. And I wish I was exaggerating. But uh, in their attempt to pander to the per small fraction of a percentage of their non-users, they are absolutely getting rid of their customer base. And I can't think of any other reason than what I've previously covered in saying that they're being extorted and they're scared of the media press for whatever reason. They'd rather lose billions of dollars than make games for gamers. And here we go. Microsoft publishes a new inclusion guide for video game devs recommending against creating female characters with exaggerated body proportions. But it's not just that. They want to erase white people from video games. And I wish I was exaggerating. So let's get into this one. Microsoft has released a new product inclusion guide for video game developers, which in addition to a number of other such recommendations aimed at appeasing the terminally online, notably suggests that creators completely abstain from depicting any sexualized or unrealistic female characters within their works. But what does that mean? What, is, what does unrealistic body proportions mean? Because we saw the backlash from Stellar Blade, air quotes, backlash, the weirdos complaining that Stellar Blade's character was unrealistic of actual females, only for them to get dunked on by the release footage of the body cam that they got, where they took and actually took, where they actually took a model and just 3D rendered her body. Are they calling that unrealistic? I mean, I guess technically it's unrealistic for America, considering the average woman is five foot four and 170 pounds. But I would call that the unrealistic body type, the fat woman online. Made public on March 20th as part of the 2024 GDC or Games Developer Conference, the GDC. Microsoft's new Gaming for Every Product Inclusion Framework calls on developers to actively consider four specific areas when creating a new title. Those being, as per the framework's official website, approachability which ensures all players existing and new, experienced and novice, feel safe and welcome. The hell, what the hell does that even mean? Gamers to feel safe and welcome? Dude, if I'm playing Gears of War and I'm fighting the people that came from the center of the earth, I don't feel, I don't feel safe. I feel like I want to kill them all for invading my, 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 my house, for killing my friends. How, that's supposed to make me feel safe? What, no, no more fighting games? Or, or Halo, when the Covenant invades. What's safe about that? I don't want some blue-haired feminist fat girl run trying to run, because let's be honest, they get about five foot and they're out of breath. They can't even make it up a set of stairs, let alone go and melee a, an elite. <laughs> what are you talking about? Oh, you want to feel safe in the community? Well, let me, let me say who that community is. I covered Black Girl Gamers in the other video. 60,000 people. Or I can go with the people who actually say, man, these games are getting trash and they're too woke and there's almost 340,000 of them. Who, whose side do you think I'm going to pick? I'm going to pick the, the 340,000, not the weirdos screaming on Twitter. But I mean, I guess that's why they deleted their Twitter accounts, right? That's why all those uh, weirdo game devs spouting out that nonsense about uh, racism and gaming have started deleting their Twitters. Go back into hiding. Representation is about reflecting the diversity of the player and creator community so everyone can feel like they belong. I got a news for you. The largest majority of your game's player base is white men. Maybe that's who you should actually appeal to. But I guess that's why your games are failing and why they're getting ratioed into oblivion. Globalization. I'm resisting the urge to go Alex Jones on this one. It's about making global players feel at home and ensuring their experience has local, relevant, and respect. So it's absolutely just going to be generic, just plain, boring, bland. You have to feel represented no matter where you are. Like, that, that's impossible to do. It's literally impossible. 
But I mean, globalization. Let's just uh, let's just say Alex Jones was right on that one. Accessibility is about making games and experience playable for other for people with disabilities and strive to make products accessible by design for the ground up. What what does that have to do about gaming? Are you telling me that people can't hold a controller? Because you're certainly not talking about price point when you're talking about $700 consoles or your games coming out being $70. You know, most people make below 40 k a year. By the time you put on rent on top of that, they have zero money left over. So you're definitely not talking about pricing. So you're, this obviously is pandering to the absolute weirdos who are extorting you for this. Like, let's just be completely honest about that. Because you're not talking about the, the millions of people who have spent money for a decade on your games who have scrounged together together pennies to buy your stuff, only for you to raise the price to be almost $70. Dragon's Dogma 2 is a perfect example. $120 by the time you buy the DLC. $70 to $120? Let's break that down. Let's actually break that down. That's You're talking about somebody who, let's just say, makes minimum wage. An entire day, and then some, of work to pay for their game. An entire day, at the bare minimum. Bear minimum at the $70 price point. Now, let's say they, they want the DLC. Let's say they have to get the DLC because, you know, you guys give half games anyway. So they want the full game. They're going to have to pay by the DLC. And let's say it's, you know, another $30, $100. $100. Let's go a little bit less than Dragon's Dogma. You're talking about a day and a half of work when someone has to pay for food, water, electricity, and rent to buy a fucking video game. So you're certainly not talking about accessibility in terms of affordability. That's for damn sure. You've already excluded a majority of your player base by representation. You've already excluded a majority of your player base by saying, wait, we don't want attractive women. You must, you must enjoy the fat, frumpy, blue-haired, screaming liberal. Let's, let's keep going. Microsoft also released a product inclusion action guide for developers to follow in order to keep their titles sufficiently progressive and unoffensive. Congratulations, your shit's offensive to most people. Having your story told is a universal human need. No, it's not. But for many in marginalized communities or markets outside the U.S., it's rare to be represented in media, let alone games. And as a result, some people could feel like a secondary consumer to, to our content. Marginalized communities. Do you mean straight white, white male gamers? Because these people have been in every damn commercial, every damn advertisement for the last couple of years. But you know who's not? The dude who works 40, 50, 60, 80 hours a week and comes home and just wants to relax for an hour and play video games, they haven't been in your commercials for a very long time. But you know who is in your commercials? The fat weirdo claiming that he has multiple genders, going into women's locker rooms at Planet Fitness, saying that they're underrepresented, but they're in every damn commercial you've put out over the last couple of years. So who's actually underrepresented? Who's actually being marginalized? Because it's not the people in your commercial, that's for damn sure. To end this, Microsoft then presents developers with a set of 10 questions to consider when it came to the projects in order to ensure they were properly inclusive. I'm so sick of this inclusive garbage. Are you telling new stories or sharing new perspective with product experience? Do all of your characters' players' depictions look the same? What steps have you taken to ensure characters are represented respectfully and authentically? Well, <laughs> I believe the new stat is 52% for the trans Jenga community. <laughs> so by that logic, are they, uh, are they raptor swinging in the middle of the game? Because that would be authentic and representative. <laughs> All of these weirdo, like, how? look, if you're making a game, let's just say in Japan, are you saying we've got to, I, I know exactly what they're saying. They're saying you got to have black people in there. You got to have trans Jengas in there. That's what they want. Because they would be absolutely pissed if it was just white people and Japanese people in a Japanese game. They would call it racist. They would call it sexist. Have you validated assumptions you have made about your audience to check for blind spots or unintended stereotypes? <sighs> Would you feel proud to show a member of the community how their culture character is depicted with your experience? I don't care if the game's good. This, 
I want Microsoft to lose all the money. That's what I want to happen. I want Microsoft to lose all the money. You you relied on us for decades to build up your company to where it's profitable and make video games without having to worry about pandering to your to your, anybody else. We your consumer is gamers that have been gamers for 10, 15, 20, 30 years at this point. 30 years. You've had a consumer base that is yeah, you made a game. It's probably good. We're going to buy it. You made a game. It's probably going to be fantastic. We're going to buy it. Oh, you made a sexy female character. Fantastic. And now you're like, yeah, all you guys who paid us over these decades, screw you. We're going to pander to this micro fraction of a percent of people because um, reasons. And then when we don't buy your product because you say it's not for us and to leave your space, you call us bigots and say we have to buy it. Fuck you. Fuck you. Fuck everything you stand for. I hope you go bankrupt. You want you want us to pay for all the all of your shit, and then you tell us you hate us, so we quit buying your shit. And now you're like, why are you bigots doing buy our shit? No, fuck off. You get nothing. You get zero dollars. Absolutely nothing. Go bankrupt. I hope you lose your house. I hope your family has to live in slums in Brazil gonna tell us after taking our money for decades you hate us and you don't want our money then beg for our money get out of here i'm sick of your shit fucking hate these absolute weirdos and i hate these corporations for pandering to them what'd you expect that was gonna happen but no i'm somehow supposed to feel sorry for the billion dollar company that i helped build that they're losing money now no this is what you asked for this is what you get i need a smoke break after this <laughs> Fuck, I need a smoke break after this. Uh, they they link an article to an air quote study. I, reading through it, 79.2% of main characters are male. That seems accurate. That seems accurately to represent the gamers. 8.3% of games had a female main character of black, Asian, or other ethnic origins. That seems pretty accurate. Well, actually, it seems, that absolutely seems overrepresentative of the gamers who are actually playing video games. 54.2% of main characters in games are white. That seems underrepresented. We need to get women out of video games. Like, look, I know there's the occasional real female gamer, and I do say occasional, but most of them are fucking tourists who don't actually care about video games. They just want to be part of the club. And we've seen it, the entire reason Gamergate 2.0 took off or Gamergate started is because women invaded spaces and changed video games, changed companies to what they want it to be rather than what it is. Exaggerated body proportions. There's a reason Stellar Blade is so anticipated in the gaming community right now. This is the, probably the only reason I would be picking up a console to play Stellar Blade. I'll sell it when it's done and keep the money. All right, I'm done ranting before I before I really piss myself off. <laughs> Guys, I want to hear your thoughts in the comments section. While you're there, smash that like button. Make sure you're subscribed. And until the next one, guys, be easy like sleazy.